this ministry because of that. The dead has been risen because of that in this ministry. But we'll get a people in here that won't think like that. See, we can't stop and think and say, well, you know, Brother Ken, that's from back then. They're not from back then. Right. Amen. Trust me, I've been there a long time. I know where they come from. Amen. So if it's not from back then, but it's for now, why come I can't get something? It's because my mind is too far, or too far gone. I put down in my notes. And you can put down too and look at your neighbor when you do it. Say, at another, another church, you might gather in the name of music. See, people come together because they love a good praise and worship leader. Yeah. They love a good band that can sit up and play all the latest songs. So they gather so they can hear some music. But when the music stops, that devil still back there, he say they ain't playing no more music, huh? Gotcha. Look at your neighbor and say, at another church, at another church, they might gather in the name of social purposes. Some, Some people go to church just so they can say, I go to church. I'm a good Christian. Mama raised me and my brother. We went every Sunday. But you still act like the world. Tell your neighbor, say, at another church, at another church, you might gather in the name of religious reasons. You might gather in the name of religious reasons. Because some people come just because they think that one trip is going to keep them from hell. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but uh, when I was in the world, it was so funny. We were so lit. And my cousin, I, I probably told her she felt a lump on her breast. I'm talking about we lit. We jumped in the car. I said, I don't want you to die. <laughs> I don't want you to die. I don't want you to go to hell. Let's go see Dad. <laughs> They had the dead pastor behind the pulpit, and God said he fine up the church. I just bust in the door. God damn! I just I ain't gonna say what I said. Can I just find a lump on the bread? He said, "Boy, ain't it crazy how religion lets you know what a safe house is at?" <laughs> Huh? You run up in there after the devil hit you across your back, took some skin off your elbow, you slide up in there, you say, Pastor! <laughs> Look, there's some people that's missing from this congregation that will be here in January, February. Amen. <laughs> oh, you think I'm playing? Watch the door. Watch the door. And when they come, say, I'm not looking at you strange, it's just crazy. <laughs> But the kid in November said, y'all was coming back. <laughs> you know why? Trouble come. Yeah. And they know where fire's at. Yeah. How many people still call pastor and ask him to pray for him and don't show up in the sanctuary? How many people still beg and say, pastor, you my man of God, but don't show him the respect of showing up to the house of God? Because they know where the power's at. But pastor has put a limit on You can't keep leeching off my life. You can't keep pulling uh, a virtue out my life that my congregation needs because you way over there and fell in sin and now you need some help. What you need to do, call Pastor Dead Man and ask him can he pray. And nine times out of ten, they have already talked to Dead Man. And he didn't pray with him. Hallelujah. And the Bible goes on to say, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I wrote my notes. God responds to his children. Amen. Opens up heaven to the sounds of his children. See, at dominion, we gather in the name of Jesus. And so when I come to him with problems, nine times out of ten, the first thing I say is, Jesus, you see where I'm at. Jesus, it's hurting me to the core. Jesus, I don't know if I can go home another day. And when I call out his name, my father, listening to me, opens up heaven 
and begins to give me an answer with fire. Because at one moment I was about to die. Then God changed it in a matter of seconds. At one moment I was supposed to be the loser. Then God changes in a matter of seconds. At one moment I was supposed to lose everything that I had. But then in a matter of moments God changes it because whenever I can get to his house and I can think about his name and I can gather in his name, all of a sudden he can hear my voice and he can suddenly fix those things that was changing. Suddenly fix those things that was chasing after my life. Fix those things that wanted me dead. Fix those things that said I couldn't make it. Fix those things that wouldn't let my mind free. Amen. How many people in this house will be honest and say you're still battling stuff in your mind that came from the world? Amen. It's because the devil, if he can keep your mind off of Christ, if he can keep your mind off of God, he can keep it occupied with the world. Amen. You're not going to come to my house and find me slipping doing nothing. I'm going to be Brother Ken in my living room, Pastor Ken now, in my living room, in my car, at this church. You're not going to come over there and sneak up and stick your ear to the door and hear me and Pastor Tay in that box. You're not going to hit it. You're not going to go through and find pornos everywhere in the house. Because even at our house, our mind is staying. I'm bragging about y'all so You better know it. You better know it. Because there was a time in my life my mind was so far from Christ. And I remember the death that chased me and I chased death back. See, when you looked at a man who wasn't scared to die, that's a thing to be scared of the wrong person to hang out with. I rode solo for one reason. Nobody wanted to ride with me. And if there was somebody riding with me, nine times out of ten, he's just as crazy. So my mind is not stayed on Christ, so I don't flash back. I treat my wife way better than I treated anybody else in my life. What up? Yeah, I don't care about you saying amen, co-signing for me. Don't need it. I'm pretty good with God. <laughs> But the thing is, I had to come to a point. How do I keep my mind on Christ? And so I showed up at the man of God's feet. See, some of us get too proud to where we can't come back in there. Back. Amen. Come on. See, we got saved here. Yeah. But then we act like we got saved somewhere else. Amen. We got the word from him. Yeah. But we act like we discovered it on our own. Yeah. Every scripture we know, you read it to us first. Amen. But we the scholars now. See, I'm not too prideful to come slide back in at home plate and say, y'all better do something with me. About to go stupid. Amen. I seek the man of God, the woman of God, because for 20 years, they've been putting up with people like me. Amen. Oh, they done dealt with three folk camps. They done rebuked the devil out of three folk camps. But this one has decided to stay as he changed. Amen. See, it's hard for a congregation to sit back and recognize what the man of God has done for your life. Come on. Yes, yes. Would you be here nope. without him? No, no. I'll be, you know what I'm saying? Like you would. Mm. You said, like, yeah, I'd probably be in somebody's church if he wasn't preaching. Because, see, I know. That's why when I say, no, nah, I wouldn't be here. No. I know I'd be dead, locked up, doing I life in the pen, yeah. stuck on somebody's marijuana, or trying to sell somebody some crap. Yeah. I'd be lost in the world, a victim of gang banging. I would be going to somebody's gun shop. But it's you yeah. who've been standing here for 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. In a room where to hear power from on high. Yeah. And like you said a while ago, suddenly some things don't change. Yeah. Yeah. But see, as I see dominion, I see it as a church on fire. Because when other people come from other churches, they come in here. And the first look they do is this. <laughs> Scared to say it ain't right. <laughs> Scared to say it is right. So you look. Then the dance team come out. <laughs> they got dancers too. Amen. Then the preacher come out. Pastor. He yo bro you. He say Medulla instead of Medusa. <laughs> But by the time he threw preaching the word of God to you, it didn't matter if he did 
didn't know how to say Medusa. <laughs> what he said to your spirit. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 You ready to get back up in here? And hear another word. He preached at your church when you was on another side of town. Made you look at your church like, where is this being? <laughs> Some of us come from other churches, walked up in here and was like, I can understand everything he's talking about. People yeah. mistake the church ever did for getting all well with no understanding. Yeah. They tell you what the scriptures say, but don't tell you what the scripture means. Yeah. How do I make this a part to my life? Yeah. Well, there was a pastor named Kenneth Lawrence. He used to be a gangbanger, used to sell dope, Amen. used to shoot guns. Amen. Used to run the streets, and now he understands the word. Ain't been to one seminary, ain't been to nobody's Bible college, ain't been nowhere with God that's in a room with God, locked up for years with God, reading the Bible like his life depended on it. Then in the Bible, he's a walking, talking King James Cole. And when you showed up with your problem. He gave you a scripture. Your first reaction was, everybody gives me a scripture. Then he said, do you know what that means? Oh, thank God for the day he said, do you know what that means? Because whenever he said, God has made you the head, not the tail, above, not beneath. Then he made you to be the lender and not the bar. Do you know what that means? He said, no, you're going to be blessed, son. You might be looking at empty pockets right now. But if you give God time to do what he's going to do, you're going to be a lender, not the bar. He said, he is giving you the mind of Christ. Do you know what that means? No, I don't. That means you can stop thinking about the stuff that you lost in the world. You can stop thinking about being depressed. You can stop thinking your friends don't like you. Because now you got the mind of Christ. And the only thought on your mind is how to get to heaven. How do I make Jesus happen? When I got the mind of Christ, I start out for it. Oh, watch this. Thank God for a pastor who explained tithing to you. For years, some of us just gave. I don't even know why we do this no more. Then he come in and tell you, did you know that the tithe belonged to God? And he said, if you give me the ten, I'll bless the ninety. And I'll take that little bit that you gave me because I know it's a sacrifice because you got cars, house, clothes, credit cards, cables, and internet, all them Red Raider tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but make sure y'all look, they're going to give them away. <laughs> but I'm not the only one who got it. <laughs> but God said, I'll take that 10%. I'm not God for no Texas God said, I'll take that 10% that people call insignificant. Because people say, man, what is God going to do with a little $5 off of 50? He'll make that 45 turn into 450. <laughs> Oh, he'll make that five dollars that you turn and turn into some favor. I know I'll be happy for favor. Yes. Yes. I'll be, be happy, more happy for favor than I do a check. Yeah. I do, because favor make them say, you know what we're going to do? We're just going to forget this. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I ain't even got to catch that up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your favor. But thank God for a man and woman of God that was positioned not to just give me word, but to give me word with understanding. Now when I go back and talk to my family, I talk with understanding. Because how many of your family members quote scriptures to you? <laughs> like they the Bible. You know God said in Luke 71 verse 98. <laughs> God said that he that drinketh of the wine to have strong feet and run with dick. <laughs> like, boy, God ain't said that nowhere in it. But God did tell me, be ye sober minded. Do not be a man of strong drink. What is it? It's in the Bible. <laughs> we got members like the Exodus 3 verse 7. So when God hears our voice whining and crying to him, because I know I whine to him. God, get me out of this. God, 
If you get me right, if you get me out of this, I'll serve you. Amen. Who'd have said that? Amen. Huh? Go ahead and run. Y'all like, I'm, I'm a, yeah, I was gonna say, I don't know how y'all like was. Mine was usually happen if they was hitting the bubble gum behind me. God, if you get me out of this, I'm going back to love. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to play them drums, Jesus. I'm going to play them. I'm going to play them drums, Lord. I'm going to play I'm going to play them the best anybody ever played. Just don't let that man see that war, Jesus. Be like me and Big Goofy back there. We out robbing stuff. Cop run right up on us while we robbing somebody. But he don't see us. We scramble to the car. We get in. I said, go, 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 go. Vroom. We see another victim in our escape. What do we do? Stop to rob somebody else. <laughs> this time the cops saw us. We went to praying, God, don't let them see us. <laughs> don't let them see us. That's how we do. We wait till the time of trouble to call on God instead of just calling on him when we Amen. call on him. Amen. Exodus Amen. 3, verse 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people. And when I was doing I was reading this, I told God, is this how you talk to pastor? In 1995. He said, as the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrow. So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians yes. and to bring them up from that land to a good and large land, to a land flowing with milk and honey, mm -hmm. to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out. God gave Pastor a charge that after he got saved, after he got fit, that he heard King Jr. crying in Egypt. And he said, I hear him crying, but ain't nobody willing to go get him. I need a man. See, when you was crying, Pastor had a man. Amen. I mean, God had a man. So, sir, when he was crying, God had a man. Amen. That no matter where he was at, he was on a mission to come get you. Amen. Going back to the place where he committed murder. Going back to the place where people knew him as Moses. Going back to go get people that God has called out. And God told them they're going to be crazy when they come out. Some of them going to hate you for pulling them out their stuff. I'm going to get them in. Some of them gonna talk bad about you, but go in there and get them anyway because after a while they're gonna change because of the words that's coming out your mouth. Some of them gonna fight you when you get to the Red Sea, but go get them anyway. See, when it was me on my knees looking for help, it was Pastor that was coming to Egypt. When it was me looking for somebody to rescue my soul, it was Pastor on his way to Egypt. Oh, I was in my living room, I was full of liquor. I was full of marijuana with a 45 sitting on my table. Thinking about killing me? Oh no. Thinking about killing about two more people. Because I wasn't going to never do nothing to me. And then God heard me cry. He said, call your daddy. When I got on the phone with him, I cried like a baby. I could hardly speak. And when he said, what's wrong with you? It's about 1 o'clock in the morning. 2 o'clock in the morning. I said, daddy, I'm tired of this life. That I'm living. Yes. If you don't help me, I'm going to kill him tonight. And he prayed like a pastor supposed to pray. Hallelujah. He put the son to the side. Yes. He put daddy to the side. All of a sudden, Superman showed up in a cape from Lubbock, Texas to Amarillo. He was hollering through the phone. Devil, come up out of him. There was a true deliverance that happened in my living room in Amarillo, Texas. When I snapped out of the rebuking that he was doing to the devil, I had torn my living room up. 
I have broke glass tables. I have knocked holes in walls. I have flipped couches and chairs over. I have busted my dumb down because that devil wanted my soul. He could care less about my life. It was my soul that he was after. Not my stuff. Not the woman that was in my life. Not my, he wanted my soul. And he had me. And whenever the pastor of this church Dominion Holy Ghost delivered five tabernacles for sitting on top of the phone. He started screaming at that thing that was trying to kill my soul. And I woke up, I was crying like a baby again, but this time in my right mind. This time with my right spirit. This time with my right soul. I think when Pastor rebuked the devil, I left them on hold for 30 minutes straight. Because deliverance was taking place through a phone line. Amen. Look at your cell phone. Amen. You never thought with all the Facebook and Twitter and the text that that could be an instrument of deliverance. Amen. But I woke up in my right mind, same pistol in the flow, same bottle of gin in the flow, same bag of weed in the flow. But that desire for it was gone. That desire to kill somebody was coming. That desire to live that life was coming. I had gotten touched with some fire. My life had changed for the first time. I tried to stay in Amarillo. Ain't it amazing that whenever the pastor laid his hands on him, prayed for you, rebuked that devil, that devil, how you try to stay where you was at? But something on the inside of me was telling me, we can't stay here no more. We got to go get the rest of the fire. I didn't want to come back to love. It was in my mind I wasn't coming back to love. But the more I stayed away from that fire, I think I stayed two weeks. Y'all went to California. But all of a sudden, that something started changing in my life. I said, I don't want to be here. I started walking to this church, and they weren't preaching nothing. It's the worst thing to do is to walk in the church when you need God, and they don't give you God. They give you a program, give you a nice song, hand you a ticket, give you a pamphlet. I don't want your trinkets. I need Jesus. My best God. I called my pop, I said, when you come back from California, come get me. He said, I'll come get you. When they came, my hair was long as my wife's. I had cut it all off. I didn't want no old man on me. Amen. I threw all my cigarette, weed smelling clothes in the van with, with Pastor. He shut that van door, and I started a brand new life. Amen. Amen. I, Testimony. Yours a little different than mine, but the same man is involved. In it. You might not have went through the trouble I went through, but the same man is involved in your testimony. Joe Hillman might not have been from murderous demons, but it was from some kind of sickness. But the same man is involved in it. How can he be that powerful? And we not respect him for that fire that come out of his life. Come on, man. This church been standing on 20 years of fire. From uh, 45th Street to the Billy Meek Center. Fire. From the Billy Meek Center to 54th and Avenue L. Fire. From 54th and Avenue L to Upland. Fire. You never gonna walk in this church and it's gonna be full of dead people. Never gonna walk in this church and ain't nobody gonna have the Holy Spirit. Because not because we willing to go that far. The man of God, the woman of God that stepped behind the bullpen, preach about that fire. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. I needed something burned out in my life. Amen. Whether it was my thinking, my heart, the sickness, I needed it. I couldn't get it from family and friends, but the man of God changed my life. A church on fire. Then I'm finna close. Acts 2, I see you. 41, 47, you ain't gotta turn there. But the Bible says, therefore, those who accept it, get that word in your spirit. We will stop rebuking pastor and co-pastor. We will be so much better. Amen. Accepted and welcomed his message and were baptized. They were added that day about 3,000 souls. That sounds like a church on fire. Yeah. And they, did, they steadfastly preserved, devoting themselves constantly, a church on fire. 
It said to instruction and fellowship of the apostles, to the breaking of bread, including the Lord's Supper and prayer. And a sense of awe and revelation and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were performed through the apostles, the special messengers, messengers all who believed, who adhered to and trusted in and relied on Jesus Christ were united and together. They had everything in common and they sold their possessions, land, property, and their movable goods and distributed to the price among all according as any had need. And day after day, they regularly assembled in the temple with united purpose in their homes. They broke bread, including the Lord's Supper. They partook of their food with gladness and simplicity and generous hearts, constantly praising God and being in favor and goodwill with all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were being saved from spiritual death. One, those that accept that are baptized Look at what kind of gentleman the Holy Ghost is. You first have to accept him. Don't never be scared of this fire that's coming because if you don't want it, it's not coming. Amen. Did you hear me? If you don't want it, it's not coming. We can't stand up here and slave for hours over you and force the Holy Ghost up on you. It's got to be something you were seeking when you walked in the door. Two, three thousand souls were added. Holy Ghost fire needs to save some souls. If you're full of fire, you need to be bringing people through the door with you. You need to be preaching to people wherever you are. Three, it takes devotion to be a church on fire. You can't have a reason that's good enough to miss. We got too many good reasons to miss church. Amen. We got too many good reasons why we miss church. Hallelujah, I know. It's your toe. I stepped on it. Amen. Nobody can interfere with my devotion. Amen. Not my mom. They wouldn't. Not my daddy. But not my cousins, my friends, not my boss. I told Ian the other day, he said, man, I, I told that dude I can't work Sunday. And he went, ah, Sunday. I said, well, I can work Sunday. He said, don't ever budge. We flinch as Christians. We make this statement. I'm saved. And the devil do like me. Stop flinching. I still remember this example Pastor did on 54th and Avenue L. I'm going to do it with Brother Mike. Brother Mike, chase me. Can't chase nobody that ain't running. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> we friends too much. Thank you. Pastor did it with Brother Brock. He said, chase me. And Brother Brock said, run. He said, I ain't. I can't chase you then. You can't chase somebody who don't run. Stop flinching. Stop bending. Stop caving. Stop giving in. We'll give you the time, but that thing in October got to wait. But that thing in October ain't going to never wait. I will find another job. I'm adding value to your job. Now you add to me. Okay, okay. For when you are focused on Jesus, it's easy to be in unity. If everybody thought about Jesus, we wouldn't be thinking about nothing else. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, not concerned with how people dress. We wouldn't be concerned at where they park. Praise God. And you pulled up with somebody within your parking spot, your old parking spot, your old parking spot, that big old parking lot after somebody in your parking spot. Be honest with me. How did you feel? Agitated? Irritated. If you knew who car it was, you came in the door looking at it. <laughs> oh, my parking spot. No, I parked there every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Park there. Let it be one of these seats. <laughs> when we messed these seats up and did it like this, everybody was like, Where's my seat though? <laughs> I don't see my seat no more. That's so true. <laughs> I say some people not in unity just because they didn't get their favorite parking spot. <laughs> Ain't it the truth, though? <laughs> now, for the last thing, day after day, to be a church on fire, we have to continuously do this. Amen. You can't say, I've been enough. We're going back again. You have to be on fire. Because, see, I understand that I needed a daily message to pull me out of my daily mess. Amen. I found myself driving myself back to the same stuff. It's amazing I got saved and, and came down here to live 
and was hanging out with Pastor them at the barbecue. Everybody having fun. They riding and playing. I'm in the truck grind. What up? Last week. My heart was broke. <laughs> My heart was broke. I felt like a dummy. Because I love house, cars, clothes, money. Came down there to a guy that I couldn't see. Like, man, I feel like a dummy. That's the way he's sitting in his truck. I feel like an idiot, man. I said, left all that stuff in that room, man. I ain't got nothing down there. The woman got on the phone, called me, Mama, boy, you ran to your mama house. Your mama's about <laughs> That's why I didn't tell you right there. That's why I didn't tell you. And he said, like, you feel like an idiot. I said, yeah. He said, you want, you want to know why? I said, yeah. Because you remember all the good stuff about it. Remember why you left. Except about 10 more minutes, next thing I know, I was out there playing football. Happy. Then my cousin pulled up with a tube hanging out of his lungs. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's good. My cousin saved too. Life is better. Amen. It took a man of God for the fire to come down to my dumb state and bring me back up. You know how many times Pastor been in my life with his hammer and his tool with a spotlight on? Like, God, I believe. <laughs> Boy, this steady turning this up. Rebuilding. <laughs> Fixing it. Amen. I don't know how he got this in here. <laughs> Fixing it. Hammering. Putting stuff up there. Ripping down patches. You know when your mama got through them jeans, they had them iron on patches on the inside? <laughs> they just like new. No, they not. No, they not. <laughs> no, they not. Mama, look. No, they not. The blue don't even match. The blue don't even match. <laughs> and you go to school, they be like, mm, real side, <laughs> Mama made me. Some of us run around with patches on our soul and pastor been ripping them off and rebuilding them and fixing them. Doing some things that's different, changing stuff up. When you thought you would be all right there, he done done a little addition on your life and made you a different person. Now you look different, talk different, walk different, all because you sit up under somebody that's filled Amen. with fire. Amen. When you get in this life, when you become a member of this church, when you, you attend service here, one thing for sure, the Holy Ghost reigns in this house. Amen. Amen. He's not here to intimidate or to to charge nobody up. He's here to complete some stuff. Amen. And I say that tonight as you stand to your feet. That a church on fire. That we should be seeking to save souls. We know what the vision of this church is. 10,000 members. But if the people that's here right now. Don't let the fire of God work in their life. We'll never reach those 10,000. I passed them with Dr. Go to Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, they were. And I was coming with you. I was going to take my trouble with you right on to Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> and none of y'all would have met it. Wow. How old were you in 95, Kimmy? <laughs> Probably just as big. <laughs> <laughs> It was a little, it was a little smaller, right in there. <laughs> but just think, if five pastor was established for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Only you were in the fire. But God was raising up a man for you in 1995, just so that at this moment you would All have right, somebody that. Most of the babies run around and call him Paul Paul. If he wasn't here, there would be no power. Mm -hmm. Co-pastor. How many of you ladies love the influence of co-pastor? Yes, hallelujah! I saw you, thank you. I should be giving them recipes to my wife. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> I want mama's meatloaf. I can just go right in the living room and say, baby, you think we can get some meatloaf tonight? Mm -hmm. And she was talking to my wife how to cook that meat, you know? And, and my wife, my wife do her makeup different. My wife's eyebrows used to be like this. Okay. 
Tay said, Tay said, well, David, she came in with her ID. She said, look at that. I said, oh. <laughs> she wasn't ugly. It's just she looked surprised. <laughs> I said, did they not tell you they were about to take it? She, she said, that's when I was plucking my own eyebrows. <laughs> I asked my wife, I said, you always been a diva? Mm -mm, I was a gangster. <laughs> she broke out her yearbook. I said, yes, Lord, she was. So we probably been fighting. But her, my, my co-pastor's influence has changed her life. Amen. I remember Pat, uh, Sister Frances when she first came. Mm -mm. <laughs> She put on her glasses like this, she said. <laughs> so the frame, so the frame glasses was big. It was big. She saw everything. She did. But I look at your life, sis, and, then, and you know I love you. I'm your brother, for real. Uh, Jesus. Sister Francis has traveled a long journey. Oh, yes. A long journey. And she's living on the side. And I believe that the influence of co-pastor is big in her life. Amen. Even her 